Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hadge, and this is Even So, It Is Well. I am excited for today's topic. In the news recently, there has been research about the Epstein-Barr virus and its connection to developing MS. And there's also new testing being done on a potential vaccine for Epstein-Barr. Today, I'm going to talk about these both what it might mean to the future of MS diagnosis, and what it might mean for those already diagnosed. As a reminder though, on my channel, I share my thoughts on living well with MS. This does not mean that my thoughts are medical advice, and it also does not mean that my thoughts are necessarily going to agree with your thoughts. It just means that I'm thoughtful. Epstein-Barr virus is really, really common. Nearly everyone has had it at one point in their lives, like 95% of people have had it. It's the virus that causes mononucleosis, mono, the kissing disease. It got that nickname because it's so easily transmitted through saliva. There have been thoughts in the past about a potential link between Epstein-Barr and the development of MS, but there was not strong enough evidence. This most recent study done by Harvard provides compelling evidence of causality. There's enough data to show that having been exposed to Epstein-Barr is a probable factor in what causes MS. Did you know that 100% of people with MS have been exposed to Epstein-Barr? Now, not everybody that's exposed to Epstein-Barr goes on to develop MS. There are other genetic and environmental factors as well, but this is still a huge breakthrough. The study was done on 10 million adults in active duty in the U.S. military between the years of 1993 and 2013. 10 million! That's quite the sample size. I'm not sure I've seen a study with quite this sample size before. They identified 995 people that developed MS during their time in the service. They analyzed their serum samples that were collected during active duty and found a 32-fold increased risk of MS after infection with Epstein-Barr. 32-fold. What's more, this was not true of other viruses. They could get other viruses and not have the increased risk of developing MS. This shows the biggest link to date with Epstein-Barr and developing MS. Serum levels of neurofilament light chain, a biomarker of the nerve degeneration typical in MS, increased only after the Epstein-Barr infection. When we get Epstein-Barr, it stays latent in our systems. It lays dormant, or mostly dormant, and it doesn't go away. More specifically, it lays latent in our B lymphocytes. Epstein-Barr infected B cells have been found in the brains of MS patients. Currently, one of the most effective treatments for MS are drugs that deplete our circulating B cells. Epstein-Barr lays around inactive, but it may reactivate without symptoms. And when it's reactivated, our immune systems get stimulated over and over again throughout our lives. This overstimulated immune system may be doing harm to us and our central nervous systems. And Epstein-Barr is not just linked to MS. It's linked to other autoimmune diseases like lupus, mixed connective tissue disorder, and rheumatoid arthritis. And it's also linked to several cancers of the lymphatic system. It's a sneaky little devil. Unfortunately, there have been no treatments for Epstein-Barr thus far. It doesn't respond to antibiotics. But don't lose hope. Shortly after this study was released from Harvard, News was released that Moderna has begun early stage clinical trials of a vaccine for Epstein-Barr. The clinical trials have begun in humans. If this vaccine is successful, it may prevent Epstein-Barr and it may prevent MS from developing. This new research could also lead to antivirals that could treat latent Epstein-Barr that's laying around in our B cells. That's pretty darn exciting. Could this prevent MS? Could it cure MS? Could it prevent further damage to our central nervous systems? Maybe. It's probably years, if not decades away, but it's exciting nonetheless. This is probably the most interesting and exciting news I've seen in MS studies since my diagnosis, and it makes me hopeful. For those of you who've been part of this community, you know me. I'm a glasses half full of Prosecco and refillable kind of girl. And when I see news like this, it lights me up. Are you excited about this? If you are, let me know in the comments below. 
So what can we do about our latent Epstein-Barr in the meantime? Glad you asked. We can support our immune systems overall to fight off any infection and help us live well with our MS by eating nutrient-dense foods and getting rid of toxic and highly processed foods. Exercising regularly to help our white blood cells help us fight off infection. Get plenty of sleep to help our bodies fight off infections. And manage our stress because chronic stress can suppress the immune system. The question of the day is, what do you think of the news of this study and the potential vaccine? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more on how to live well with MS, watch this video next. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, please give it a like, the thumbs up icon under the video. And if you want to see more content on living well with MS, be sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, be well.